Thanks for joining us today on the Three Man Blitz. I'd just like to take a moment to remind you to follow us on Twitter at Three Man Blitz. Visit us at www.threemanblitz.com. You can listen to us on Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcast, Breaker. And don't forget to view us on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe and hit the like button. Thanks, guys. Hey, everybody, and welcome into the Three Man Blitz College Edition. It's uh, uh, something we've decided to do. We've gotten a lot of requests for it, so we're going to start trying to cover some college teams if we can. And uh, mostly going to be focusing on the SEC, but if you guys have any teams you'd like us to cover or teams you'd like us to look at, then uh, shoot us a tweet, let us know, message us, and uh, we'll see if we can get around to it. But, of course, we've got to be opening up with the national champions last year, the record-setting LSU Tigers. Go Tigers! And so to those Tigers, let's take a shot, gentlemen. Yeah, go Tigers! And let me – let me. Uh, I forgot to mention – I'm uh, joined today by Jeremy and Queasy. Yes, sir. I like Two Tigers. Co-host. So, and also three man one yeah, three-man blitz, baby. So one thing to mention, um, to know when we're going through this, and we're going to try to stay as even keel on teams as we can. Andrew, if you don't know already, is a big Georgia fan. You see his stuff back there. I'm a huge Tennessee fan. So we're both SEC East. Queasy is a big uh, Wolverine fan. Michigan. So, uh, so we so all we have our Florida. own we all hate Florida, so <laughs> I'll try not to bag on Florida. I try to be objective. <clears throat> all right, two LSU. I like Three Tigers. Blitz. Go, go Tigers. <laughs> Woo! Holy crap. Every time. I think. All right. So, I think I'll be starting us out here. And I've got us a nice little fancy graph and all these things here. Uh, so, the 2020 LSU Tigers. So, of course, their head coach is Ed Orgeron. Uh, they, uh, they're they still uh, at the helm of offensive coordinator, still uh, Steve Ensminger. Esminger. Uh, they have a new defense coordinator, Bo Pelini. Okay? So, that's just a couple. Um, a big person that they lost was Joe Brady. So, a lot of their success last year was due to Joe Brady. And he has now taken a new job with the Carolina Panthers. And he's very deserving of doing that. Um, LSU Tigers. So, a uh, bit of a surprise last year. Uh, I think a lot of people had them um, maybe like top three in the SEC West. Um, probably behind like Auburn and Alabama. I don't think many people thought that they had this kind of season in them. So, all of you guys that were living under a rock or don't follow college football... Um, you know, that 2019 Tiger team is touted as the best college football team ever. And it's very well deserved. They had a fantastic season. Joe Burrow, uh, all the accolades you could imagine, including the Heisman winner at quarterback. Uh, we've talked about him before, extremely talented. Uh, you know, he came over, had a, a really mediocre season in 2018. And then here comes Joe Brady. And in 2019, you know, he's winning all the awards. They're beating every team. They get better and better. And I don't think there was any question towards the end of the season that they were the best team. Um, so one thing I just wanted to talk about was, are they the best team ever? So that's a huge, huge accolade for every football team ever. Um, and I'm not going to say they were or they weren't, but I would say um, yes, as far as offense goes. Um, because they finished number one in scoring. They scored 48.4 points on average a game, um, which is insane. Uh, you know, they, they had that high-powered offense. Everywhere you look, they had talent. Thaddeus Moss, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, Joe Burrow, Justin Jefferson. Um, so, But where they weren't so good was defense, where they ranked 31st. So, And just to put that in the scope of just SEC, there were seven SEC teams that had a better statistically ranked defense than they did. Uh, and, of course, they had a ton of people drafted, and they had a lot of good pieces. And they they really picked it up towards the end of the year. But, you know, they had, if you look at the – let me put the scores. Uh, well, they had a lot of games where teams maybe that even shouldn't be in the in the game were still scoring like 31 points. You know, they would be winning like they'd win a game 55 to 31 or something, which is still a really good win. But, of course, that looks like to me at first glance would be like a Big 12 game where they play a lot of high, you know, high powered offense and not a lot of defense. You're looking so, at uh, I'm sorry, you're looking at Texas, Vanderbilt uh, and Auburn really were the only teams that were really, I would say, in the game. Alabama 
and uh, that, that's about it. But how many of them scored over 20 points? How many yeah, of them scored um, over 21? Texas did, Vanderbilt did, uh, Florida did, um, Alabama did, Ole Miss. Ole Miss scored 37 points. Wow, I just saw that. I remember watching that game last year and being like, wow. And uh, Oklahoma, of course, but they have a high-powered Big 12 offense. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, you know, that's just, it's not like it's bad. Of course, it, it really doesn't matter. If you win 99 to 98, it's a win. You won. I don't yeah. think it really matters. But when you're looking at best team ever and you're trying to break it down, you know, their defense was not great. So, you know, I'm not going to say that they weren't the best team ever because I would catch a lot of flack for that. And I'm not so sure if I go back and look at whatever list somebody's compiled of who actually is the best team ever or who would be the next best. I'm pretty sure this team could at least give them a run or win. Okay. Um, after that, uh, the only thing I really want to touch on is I have like three big questions for that team, okay, for this upcoming 2020 LSU Tiger team. And they shouldn't be huge, like, mind-blowing, like, oh, I didn't think of that. They should be in-your-face questions, but they're legitimate things you got to think about. Uh, the first one is, um, how is Miles Brennan going to do to replace Joe Burrow? So this is the guy that's touted. Ed Orgeron's already came out and said this is the guy. He expects him to blow up. Same kind of thing he was talking about Joe Burrow. Um, I went and watched all the tape. You know, he's, he has a lot of garbage time last year so he played in some games um but i don't think anybody can put him on the same pedestal right now of that season that burrow put up like he's the best to ever do it statistically right now so um there's no way he's going to put up the same numbers you have well, to I've actually got to some stats that. on miles brennan here in a second if you want me to hit those whenever you're done yeah do just it. to kind of just kind of put it in perspective go ahead and throw him out Oh, no, I'm going to wait until we can switch to the other graphic. You, you go ahead and keep rolling. I was just letting you know. I got you, bro. <laughs> that's good. I'm glad you got it. Um, go Tigers! So aside from that, and that should be a very obvious question, the next one's what's the offensive line going to look like? So the biggest thing that we're going to look at at the end of the season was like, okay, say they went undefeated again. That means that their offensive line has done a fantastic job because they have lost four of their starting five offensive linemen. So a lot of colleges go through a lot of turnover, but losing basically your entire offensive line is a huge deal. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, they had they had question marks going into last season about their offensive line, but they had talent and they had starts. You know, they had people that had had already been starting, and now they don't really have that. So that's a lot to do. So if my and, and you put that in with what they've lost, and then you throw it in with a new starting quarterback. Even if it was Joe Burrow, he's not going to put up the numbers he could if he's laying on his back every time he turns around. So you really have to look at that. The hardest one that they lost or the biggest deal was probably their starting center, Lord Cushenberry. So he was like their best lineman by far. Um, and then, what, of course, what was, what was his name? What was his name? Lord Cushenberry. <laughs> okay. Is that not right? <laughs> I'm sorry. Continue. No, I, I think you're right. I just, I just had to have you say it again. Okay. <laughs> Uh, what the crap, Andrew? Uh, can the defense be better? Is my last question. So again, I already touched on the defense. You know, they had a they had great players. You know, they had really good players. Um, they've got the lockdown corner that they had. They had uh, so, some of the guys they lost were uh, Kristen Fulton, Clavon Chase on, uh, Grant Delpit, Patrick Queen. I mean, these were guys that got drafted pretty high and are expected to be starters in the NFL and they still finish 31st and they have to replace them. So, but they have Bo Pelini coming in to replace uh, their old DC. So I guess we'll see what they've got cooking there. And uh, if we have time, I'll come back. I've got a lot of notes too. I'm just trying to flow through them. So Andrew, you go ahead with what you got. Well, I definitely think it should be noted that even if they did have, uh, even if they did have issues with the offensive line last season, that any time the line broke down, Joe Burrow actually just stayed on his feet. You know, so uh, he was able to escape tackles and escape the pocket. And if we're not seeing that out of this new quarterback, then the story may look a lot different. No doubt. I'm gonna switch over back to Scott uh, Andrew so you can pop up your graphics. Yeah, buddy. All right. Yeah, but anyway, I mean, they they were definitely uh, in the argument for best team of all time if they they were not the best team of all time. And uh, it, it should be noted also that that defense, they suffered some injuries. I know Grant Delpit had some stuff going on. And, 
you know, that, that put a lot of pressure on a lot of these younger guys that were coming in behind him to back him up to replace him, this and that. And toward the end of the season, after that Ole Miss game where they let Ole Miss score 37 points, they really kind of locked it down. And the only team that really got anything was uh, Oklahoma with 28 points, but that was compared to their 63 points. And then uh, Clemson trying to show up with 25 points. But, you know, they just – we all saw that game. It was awful. Yeah. But, well, they, had Arkan- they had Arkansas scoring 20 on them too, and Arkansas was garbage last year. <laughs> yeah. But I think it was mostly garbage time. <sighs> yeah. And, Jeremy, well, um, on their, I don't think you pointed out their 2020 schedule, the losses that you think they're going to take. I think you had their uh, projection as 10 and 2. Yeah, so I have them 10 and 2. Um, I've got their losses maybe surprisingly to a few as uh, their second game of the season in Texas. And then their uh, second loss coming to Alabama. So they're both home games, which I think is what's most eyebrow raising. But against Texas, my uh, my thoughts on this game is, of course, they played them really well last year. Texas is still going to be a pretty pretty good team. Expletive deleted, inserted was what I was wanting to say. Uh, but you know, and you you throw the COVID stuff in there, and all these new pieces, and that's just a really big game and they're only going to have maybe a few practices we'll see and then one game under their belt and it's just a lot of stuff to try to throw in and gel together i think they'll be a great team of course i really do but uh, i think texas can put it to them like they did last year and they were so good so well it should be noted that uh while i'm not sure what all the other conferences are doing that the sec is coming back together and teams are showing back up on campus uh june 8th i believe that's just a few days away so, uh, Jeremy, if you if you feel uh, ballsy about it, I'll take a shot bet on that Texas game. You know, I'll call take it. LSU. I'm not I'm not going to back right. down on it. All right. <laughs> I, I mean, Texas Texas is a, always a tough team. So they are. They you know they 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 on the rise again. Uh, so you, you never know what's going to happen right there. And it's the second game of the season, so they're still fresh. You know, uh, with college teams, sometimes these earlier games are they're like preseason games, so they're still trying to figure out themselves. So that's right. I do see them winning that, that game, though. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, it sounds like you're on my side. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I see them had, winning that game. Up. I do you see had to them finish losing. up and say, listen, Andrew's I right. Think, I do see them losing two games, though. Uh, one game, of course, in the swamp. I won't say of course, but I think that it's always tough to play in the gift in the swamp. We hate We're not a big fan of Florida, but it's always tough. We all know that it's tough to play in the swamp. Tough so I think they will lose it. Yeah. They, they were losing Florida and also uh, one of their last games against um, Alabama. That, that could be a tough game, too. I got them losing that one, too. Yeah. No. I do not, but I will show you what I do have real quick, guys. All right. And, and then that Alabama game will have a lot of big implications on both teams, um, of, of course, of whether for that, that, that conference and also for the national title championship. So. Okay. And while we're talking about schedule, before, before you get back at it, Andrew, is – you know, they've got a really uh, – they've got a favorable schedule towards the beginning of the season. Uh, you take Texas out, and they've got a couple of cupcakes. Then they got Ole Miss at home. they got Nichols at home. Then they go to Florida. and But then they have to go to Arkansas. Then they got Mississippi State home, bye week. And then they get into a, a pretty hard stretch at the end where they got Alabama and South Carolina at home. And then they have to go on the road and play Auburn and Texas A&M. So. Don't, don't sleep on Nichols State. <laughs> you guys uh you guys see my screen pulled up real quick yep i see it okay well I, I, what i have here on the 2020 schedules i have them losing at florida and at auburn and i'm not like i said i'm not a florida guy i don't really have a whole lot of faith in florida i don't think they're going to be you know talk of the stc this year this or that but it's always a tough game when lsu plays florida that's always one i have to tune into even as a georgia fan because uh i mean that 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 game right there is a big decider in the SEC period oh, like uh and and I think I think Florida will end up taking it at home they just hate each other man that's a big rivalry right there and also I think they'll lose in the Plains I don't think it'll be like a like a blowout game or anything it'll definitely be a barn burner down to the end but uh, I see this team going 10 and 2 as well but I think they can take Alabama at home Alabama may be having a down season and uh so we'll see but I threw in a couple of fun facts about LSU for you guys that, you know, or don't really know a whole lot about LSU. Legend has it that for each time Mike the Tiger roars during a pregame lap around the field, that's how many times the team will score during a game. I thought that was really interesting. LSU's Tiger. Well, I bet he, yeah. he wasn't scoring that many times last year. I bet he wasn't roaring every time. Surely not. Yeah. 
Uh, LSU's Tiger nickname was drawn from the Civil War fame of two Louisiana brigades who fought so fiercely that they become, became known as the Louisiana Tigers. I did not know that. I thought everybody just liked Tigers. Everybody in the SEC is a freaking Tiger. Everybody in the country is a Tiger. we got too many Tigers. tigers. Y'all chill out. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. The LSU Tigers wear white football jerseys at home and away games, bending the NCAA rule that requires home teams to dress in color. Now, it started in 1958 when Tigers coach – Paul Dietzel decided that his team should wear white at home. When LSU won the national championship that year, the white jerseys became tra- became tradition and legend. And I know uh, mm-hmm. from like the mid 1980s until like the mid 1990s that they were they were made to wear the purple jerseys at home. But uh, they just kept petitioning, kept petitioning. Finally, the NCAA agreed to let them wear the white jerseys at home. So that's why we see that now. And I've always wondered that, and I thought that was interesting to find out. That is cool. I like their white jerseys too. I like their unis. It's it's something different, you know. And some of the key players that we're going to have to focus on for 2020 to really kind of decide how this team's future here is uh, their quarterback coming back in. I know you spoke about him earlier, Miles Brennan. He's a junior, and uh, he's a pro-style quarterback with a run ability when needed, kind of like what Joe Burrow was able to do. He wasn't a run-first type quarterback. I wouldn't have even called him dual threat, but, man, when he needed to run, he did. Mm Mm-hmm. Last season, he had 70 attempts for 42 completions, not that stellar, uh, two touchdowns, three interceptions. You know, it was a lot of garbage time. He didn't really have a lot of college playing time. They were kind of trying to just warm him up a little bit. But what blows my mind is his Heisman odds actually sit at 25 to 1 for a guy who's never really started a college football game. Wow, that's pretty And he's a uh, former four-star quarterback out of the 2017 class. So, you know, he's he's nothing to sneeze at. But uh, I guess we'll have to see what kind of work they can do with him in the offseason. And then, of course, Jamar Chase. Now, I've, I was telling you guys the other day about, you know, how insane this guy's season was. Like, I remember watching him play and, you know, just realizing that he was fantastic. But this guy's the SEC record holder for receiving touchdowns in a single season with 20, receiving yards in a single season with 1,780. That's a wide receiver, 1,780. That's nearing 2,000 yards. That's wild. He yeah, had – th- Go ahead. You know, I was just going to say, I'll throw a wild stat at you that I, I, had, I didn't write it down. I just remembered it because it was so crazy. Is that, like, They're the only team in history to have a quarterback that threw for like 6,000 yards, two 1,000-yard-plus receivers, and a 1,000-yard rusher. So, wow. That offense was so high power. Yeah, they were wild. But, I mean, he won so many awards. He was first-team All-American, All-SEC first-team, SEC SEC Offensive Player of the Week versus Ole Miss, where he just went off. He had 84 receptions, like I said, 1,780 yards, 20 touchdowns, which is insane for a receiver. And he averaged 21.2 yards per catch. Every time this kid caught the ball, it was equal to two first downs. Jesus. Um, If if I I may say, man, I I did do my – Research on LSU and Chase was the guy I was looking forward to seeing next this year, this upcoming year. I think he will be a breakout. I think he'll do great, uh, all, straight talent. And I think uh, definitely Odell Beckham will be giving him some money at the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> Oh, that was funny. And uh, another player who also wore number three last year, uh, besides Miles Brennan, was sophomore Tyrion Davis Price. They like these running backs with hyphenated last names. I don't know; it must be a Louisiana thing. Uh, he's a he was the primary backup to Ceh last season in 2019. He had 60 attempts, 275 yards, six touchdowns. He's a uh, six foot one, 226 pounds. He's a pretty big boy, and for a guy that size, he ran a 4.53 40 yard dash. So he's mm-hmm. uh, he's maybe a force to be reckoned with this next season. Now he may have a little different play style than Clyde Edwards Hilaire, but uh, we're gonna see how much this offense changes. So who knows? And of course, on their defensive side of the ball, a guy who I think will really step up as a leader and just an all out, you know, statistical anomaly in the SEC in 2020 will be number 24, Derek Stingley, the quarterback. He's a or cornerback, I'm sorry. He's a uh, sophomore, six foot one, 193 pounds, pretty quick dude. He had 31 solo tackles last season, seven assists, six interceptions on the season for a freshman cornerback. How yeah. wild is that? Yeah, that's impressive. He was pro football focus's freshman of the year, which these guys are so focused on stats. I mean, that should say something right there. He gave up just 29 receptions to 69 attempted pass uh, passes, and he had 14 pass breakups. 
and he was the highest graded Power Five cornerback in the country, not just freshman, but of of everybody in the entire country. Oof. So, uh, yeah, I'm really excited to see this guy next season. So, in other words, after this season, he'll be a junior. So, after his junior season, he'll be on some NFL roster. Absolutely. And, and Jamar Chase is gone after this year. And, uh, yeah, so Jamar so Chase is wild. With him, with uh, Justin Jefferson, that was just – that was an insane one-two punch. It was almost unfair. Now, if I, if I may mention that quarterback they're bringing in, of course he's a successor after Burrow, but uh, I know the LSU has mentioned that he will be their number one uh, quarterback. Oh, yeah. But it's, it's – I, I hate to come after Burrow, but it's not many – it's not as high as Burrow right now. They're not as high on Brennan as they are on Burrow right now. So it's, it's something to look at. You know, uh, you, of course, seeing the success of LSU last year, so you're hoping right. they will do that well again, but it's still the difference between Burrow and Brennan. And I yeah. agree with you, Queasy, 100%. And I don't think – I mean, of course, it wasn't all Burrow last season. Those receivers exactly. were insane. Exactly. And so, if you look at some of the recruiting, which uh, is something we actually – should have done a little more, but LSU actually they they just reloaded man at receiver, and uh, I think that's going to be a draw for good quarterbacks in the future. You got good receivers, you got qu- good quarterbacks. They want to come together, they want to play together, exactly. they want to pr- both prove that they have something for the league. But uh, my guy to watch on this team besides Stingley this year is definitely Jamar Chase. He's going to be breaking more records. He's just he's an insane receiver. If it's within like a six foot radius of him, like he's putting his arms up and getting it. Exactly, oh, yeah. get more, get more yards. Getting more money, so it'll be. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Tomorrow. See, it, if I was an LSU fan, what I would be hoping is that the offense doesn't fall off a ton. You know, they're still really good, right, and serviceable, and that the defense gets much better, so they're kind of more of an evened out team, so they can grind teams down and still play that prolific style of offense. Probably not scoring four. What was it forty eight point four points a game? Uh, but if they can get like 31, it's not going to be number one in the in the NCAA. But it's still a really good year. And if their defense comes up too, they'll be really good. And I think that's what we reflected with the 10 and two projection. Um, as far as their uh, recruiting class, um, I have it pulled up. So uh, for 2020, so this incoming class right you now, show they're us ranked, that real quick. They're ranked third. Yeah, I can show it to you. They're ranked cool. third. Yeah, let me pull it up. Cheers, screen. So, yeah, so you see they're ranked uh, uh, fourth in the nation. It's like it just changed in front of me. Uh, third in the SEC. Uh, they have two five-stars and uh, Eric Gilbert, uh, tight end. That's kind of fun. Uh, from Marietta, Georgia. So, you know, you got a lot of talent. It always comes out of Marietta. Yeah, um, we were after him, and there was nothing but hype about this guy. It was between us and LSU, and, man, no he's just – he's a phenomenal tight end if you look up some of his college tape. Yeah, I, I will be looking it up. Uh, this is one thing I haven't done a ton is look up uh, other teams' recruiting classes and, like, actually watch tape, but I'd love to do that. Uh, Elias Ricks is their other five stars. They have two five stars uh, uh, on their, you know, in their class. Uh, he is a cornerback, so they have another really talented cornerback coming uh, to them. Uh, one of their big four stars was B.J. Ojolari, and I think mm-hmm. he's uh, slated to really push for a starting spot as a uh, edge rusher. And I know he was looking at a lot of SEC schools, and Tennessee was up in his top. I heard his name a ton. And, of course, he chose LSU, which is not a bad spot for him. His brother, Aziz Ojolari, is uh, one of the stars for Georgia's defense, and he is an edge rusher as well. And we honestly thought we were going to grab him too, but uh, he slipped right. through the clacks to LSU. And, man, he's he's going to be a force to be reckoned with for sure. And, yeah. and, did, and did I hear right that uh, LSU was ranked number four and in, in, well, number three in SEC? Yep, three in the SEC, so fourth that means nationally. That means two, two other teams are in. Wow, wow. It's got to be what it could probably uh, Alabama and Georgia, I would assume. You'd that's assume. Right. One of them's actually Tennessee. What up? Tennessee. No, I'm just kidding. That, that's, that's not true. It's for, <laughs> it's for 2021. <laughs> okay. uh, but that's probably right. I could look it up. But uh, No, no, no. It's just That, that shows you how strong the SEC is going to be again, once again. Yeah, and it's funny with recruiting. Um, and when people usually kind of say SEC is not – the best um, conference in in the nation, like I understand, and you know sometimes you've got like two teams that are really really good, and then you got a couple teams that aren't great. You know, you look at other uh, like maybe Pac-12 or Big Ten, most of the time Big Ten somewhere that they've got a couple of teams. You know, like five or six teams that give anybody a run for their money. But if you look okay. at just recruiting, 
it's insane. You could have, uh, you know, really good recruiting years, like eighth overall, right? Like eighth yeah. overall, like, and that's really good. And then you look, and there's four or five teams in your own division that are higher than you. So it really is crazy when you when you start looking at the uh, the recruiting aspect of it. Of course, it should be stated that it doesn't really matter. You really shouldn't even really put a rank on it necessarily. At least it should be looked at four years afterwards because you never know what's going to happen. A lot of these kids nowadays especially will transfer out. Like exactly. Jordan. Yeah, they'll transfer, and some of these five stars and four stars won't pan out the way you want them to. And I mean, things happen. But right. uh, when you're looking at these, it's just another competition for us to have. It's another yeah. bragging point that we have with each other. That's all it is. Another star on your helmet. Yeah. Yep. So LSU, man, I like their odds, and I, I'm really excited, man. I can't, I can't even say it, put into words how excited I actually am for college. I love pro ball. I love fantasy football. Um, but college football just speaks to me on a, an emotional level. I just love it. And it doesn't even have to be Tennessee. Of course, I'm a Tennessee fan. I love I'll watch every single game. I don't care who they're playing. Uh, but I love watching other games, too. I, I'll watch anybody, just about. Uh, if it's any huge team that's playing a, a serviceable team to a really good team, of course, I want to watch it. Anybody in the top 25 playing each other, I'm always watching. If and, I, I mean, nothing gets your blood going like a good old-fashioned college rivalry. You know, you got like the Red River, River rivalry. Red River. You got the Ohio State, Michigan. You got Georgia, Florida. You got the Iron Bowl, man. You know, these games, that's it. The, the, the Michigan, Ohio State. Yeah. Not about Michigan, Ohio, Michigan State. Not, not Ohio State, Michigan. Michigan, Ohio oh, State. I'm sorry, buddy. Michigan, wow. Ohio State. I, I need wow. to uh, I need to, I need to <laughs> pat it out queasy. <laughs> before we before we wrap this up, I have a question for you, Andrew. Yeah, but so you would say LSU, I would imagine, is probably one of the the hardest um, the hardest stadiums to play at, right? Death Valley. Uh, if not the yeah. Okay, so the question I pose to you is: It harder to win inside of Death Valley or at Sanford Stadium? Oh, Death Valley, hands down. Drink and it the up. thing <laughs> is, the thing is, let me tell you. Don't explain I really, it, man. Sanford Stadium is a, is a hard stadium to win in. And, you know, you've got a few others around the SEC that are just extremely difficult to win in. But a night game at Death Valley, you cannot beat the atmosphere in that place. I mean, even just watching it on TV, you know, cameras are shaking. The crowd is just all roaring and moving all at once. And it's wild. I mean, those guys need some purple lights and stuff. But Is he still talking? <laughs> He is. Hey, you know what, Queasy? Just because I usually, no matter, even if I win a bet, I usually drink with whoever loses. Just, you know, I want to drink, whatever. Um, because we're all winners. We're all winners in this thing. Everybody what gets a drink. Boop. But Queasy, you drink first, though, because you lost. Loser. That's why Stafford went to Alabama, okay? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, real talk. I'm a Georgia fan, but I got I to gotta give credit where credit's due. Right, and one thing... You guys listening, if you want us to do an episode on any other team, let us know. I don't mind to do it at all. I know these guys don't. It just gives us more reasons to put out more content and to do more research. It's something I love. I think they love it too. So, um, And one that pops up to me right now is we could probably do one on stadiums, hardest venues to play in, because there's a several that pop up. Michigan, Ohio State. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. Maryland. The big house. That's it. I don't know. And then there's, then there's Penn State with their wide out. Yeah, that one's out. always fun to watch on TV. Then there's the swamp. Since we saw y'all want to throw up. Hey, yeah, it Big Ten teams. Teams. I hate Florida, but you know, it is tough to go down into Gainesville, man. It really and is. Then, then there's to to Mississippi the State. I almost cussed on camera. Ar Arkansas. <laughs> okay, yeah, no I, said, I said it. <laughs> I mean, they gotta have fans in the stand for it to be a tough venue, my friend. <laughs> you don't want to go to Vanderbilt. I swear. Hey. That's a good point, though, Andrew. That's that's a little weird uh, for this upcoming season. If there's fans in the stands, I think you could take away all of that toughest venue stuff when you have no fans because it's a huge deal. I mean, if you go to it and it's just empty or if you have half capacity or something that's like well, that. Well, I would game love game to though. agree with you, but you're wrong. One LSU fact that I actually left out is uh, they cage Mike the Tiger up next to the opposing team's locker room for intimidation. So uh, <laughs> LSU, Death Valley would still win. There's a tiger over here while you're changing your drawers. Yeah, they keep him. They keep him in the cage, though. You remember? Was it last year? Or the year before? Where uh, Bebo, Texas's uh, big Longhorn, like 
Well, almost rammed somebody. You did. It was Uga, dog. Yeah. Did. It wasn't Uga. Yeah. At the, uh, <laughs> nobody likes, nobody likes them bulldogs. Yeah, I get out of here. <laughs> All right, guys. Anyway. Well, this was fun, and I really enjoyed doing this, and I can't wait to uh, move on to our next team. No doubt. Whoever that may be. You'll have to tune in and find out. Tune in and find out. That's right. Vanderbilt. Oh, I love bandies. <laughs> Anchor down. Anchor All down. Right, get ready for your 11, 11th loss year. <laughs> anyway. Well, as always, go for three, I guess. <laughs> yeah, go, go, go for three. For three. <laughs>